So I know that from the very beginning, when we first started this adventure, um, and Heather, you decided to be a part of this community, Greg and I talked about loving your dance and loving um, your partnership with God in song and in dance. And I don't know if you, I think you remember like the very first week that Heather just kind of broke out back in the corner, right? With a little bit of dancing during worship. And both Greg and I were so moved by that because um, that's just the space that we so want to be a part of as a place where people can express and partner and experience the Lord, whether it's totally still and quiet, whether it's expressive and big movements. And so um, that hugely blessed me. I know people need a time to just kind of like let it process or just that's good for us to have a moment to just let us rest in it. And some of us may not know till later this week or next week what was in that. I started to already feel what it was for me, um, but that's not always true. That always happened for me. But does anybody want to comment? Um, I know it's kind of a sacred space right now, so you may not have words for it yet. something but it's a way that the Lord expresses his love over us in a physical tangible way where words and song can't go dance is universal and speaks to every language and so that's why I think it's so it's so special to me um, it's it's when I'm feeling the most myself is when I'm dancing and I feel like the Lord can express his love in like a visual way so sometimes it's only a, a feeling that you get maybe when you're watching or not actually words so yeah i love that yes jared go i love that i don't know what we're going to do with you being with kids because we need like your commentary to kick us off uh i mine was just super metaphorical i just i, I got i just saw a young girl uh climbing out of a dark place i saw her just kind of moving heavy boulders and shifting timbers and suddenly she emerged uh, out in the open air, the, the side of a mountain, and then she started that climb. Um, and at the apex, she found, I said, she finds freedom and she finds herself. wanted to say that was really encouraging for me um, personally just walking in and seeing that because um, dance is a big thing for me too and I haven't been able to do it I've been feeling really kind of shy and embarrassed about it and walking in and seeing you dance and express yourself it was like wow yeah that is definitely a huge way that like we can express ourselves and for me it's just like it really I just I walked in and I needed to see it right when I did and it was beautiful and it was gorgeous and I just was like oh a kindred spirit <laughs> so that was a huge blessing for me <laughs> that's so cool anyone else I actually want to like no. that. yeah anyone else want to comment for me it was so powerful one because um it was so beautiful, but I also felt that the Lord was really showing me some of the angst and hurt and pain that I've experienced in the last year, I felt like was expressed in your dance. And I was getting to see what I haven't been able to express. Um, and I felt the Lord wanting to honor the heartache and pain that I have experienced by showing it to me in front of me and going, I see you, you know? So that was really powerful for me. Thanks. Yeah. Well, cool. So um, we're going to release kids to be with Mr. Jared. I'm kind of super jealous of you guys, just to be honest with you, because he's going to do this really super cool series for four weeks. Yeah. Okay, so today, I won't give it away, but, you know, we talk about the prophetic here, and it, if you're, I mean, if, even if you're an adult, let alone a kid, sometimes it kind of can seem magical, 
uh, we're going to talk about um, different dimensions that, uh, like our four-dimensional world that we operate in and what it would be like to be in a one-dimensional world and a two-dimensional world. And then there's more dimensions on top that mathematics and science know is there. We just don't quite understand them yet. So we're going to talk about what it's like to see us from a higher dimension mathematically oh. and what that might mean. That's so cool. I don't know. I Could be cool. I love it. Could be so cool. Super excited. So kids get to go. Older kids, if you want to go, you are welcomed. I know, right? <laughs> Y'all, we can all go. We can all stay here. Oh, wait. I'm going to take one of those things, though, Aiden. Let me pull one. Aiden, I'm going to grab one thing out of there. Right? I am going to take this out. Thanks. Okay. Bye, Alex. Did Hope go to or is she still under there? grabbing my water bottle for me. Okay. So, I don't know if you guys know this, but one of my very favorite places to shop is Marshall Home Goods. They have one of my least favorite places to shop is Marshall Home Goods. Uh, have you ever been in that store, ever? Yes, and every yeah. experience I've been has been with you waiting in line, <laughs> going, I hate this store, I hate what they sell. They do nothing for me. Great. So that's Greg's experience in any store ever, really. Yeah, I have a lot of stories I'm like store. that. I can, I can yeah. list them a lot. So of them. anyway, Greg's not a shopper. But anyway, I love this store. And I love this store because of a couple of different reasons. One, it's like you never know what you're going to find there. So it's kind of like a treasure hunt. And they have stuff that's pretty good prices. And so you get surprised with like, oh yay, this really cool brand that I really, really like that's normally super expensive, but here it's less. And so that's another thing that I super appreciate because I don't always have the budget, you know, to pay for the most expensive thing. And so it's kind of fun. And then it's not so much of a treasure hunt that you can't ever find your size. So that's also nice because that's super bummer to find everything that's, you know, you can't even take home. So anyway, Darby and I were shopping and we found what I thought was this awesome sweater. I don't know if Darby, if you would, have, would be willing to come up and even just like put it on for us real quick. The sweater, just put it on. Would you do that for me really fast? Okay, thanks. So, no, you can just leave that on and you can just put it on over the top. This one, so we bought two of them, one for her and one for me, because we still get to do that. So I love Twinsies. that. So if you'll just, yes. Things Abraham and I will never do. Although you did get to be. I will say this, for Halloween, Abraham was Harold from Harold and the Purple Crayon, and Greg was his Purple Crayon. So they did get to do that together. That was fun. Harold and the Purple Crayon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, sure. So, super cool sweater, right? And it's from Free People, with if any of you guys know, is obscenely expensive, right? So I, like, never buy hardly any of their stuff unless it's, like, something special because you know, I don't want to spend, you know, a ton of money. So I'm like super, super, super cute, right? And it was really, really affordable. So I was like, I know, are you all wondering, where is she going with this? Like, do you? Yeah, so often there's nothing wrong with their items, but every once in a while you'll find something quirky. And so in my mind, oh, there's always I was something. thinking to myself, self, why is this great sweater that's new this season like a fraction of the price of Marshall Home Goods. What is wrong with it? So I kind of just kept looking at it and kept looking at it. And I'm like, I super love it like this. But then I realized that they had stitched it inside out. Go ahead, put it on this way so that people can see right super cool new style so this is the actual pattern that it was supposed to be with the tag now on the outside and the belt on the now inside it's very mini pearl-esque with the tag on the outside there you go. for those of you who are yeah. familiar with mini pearl yeah so they stitched all the tags at the neck and on the outside and the belt and so rather than switch them all up they just sold them to Marshall Home Goods and I was trying to decide which I liked better, which version I liked better, because I bought it and fell in love with it in the other version. 
So just out of curiosity, just so I know in the future, you guys like this version better, just out of, or the other version? Who likes this version better? Okay, if you do. Right. Who likes the other version? I, I know, I like the quirky one too. Okay, right, Dan, thanks, thank you. Okay, okay, thanks babe. That's, you're all good. So. <laughs> Who likes neither version? Right, Greg likes it. Who's happy that they didn't have to go with me to have this shopping experience, right? Right? <laughs> right? So, but I thought about how funny it is in life how we often are walking around inside out. How often we're walking around um, not realizing that things are different than we perceive or experience them. That the way that we were designed isn't actually showing. It's hidden, it's locked inside, and that the true beauty you know, of us and the true reality that God means for us to be experiencing in our life circumstances isn't getting revealed. And we know that what God means for us to experience in any given circumstance isn't being revealed when we are frustrated, when we're upset, when we are filled with anxiety, when we are stressed out, when we are bitter. We know that we're not experiencing that experience in life the way that God really designed for us to experience it because he always meant for us to move from what he called glory to glory, which is an old, old word that none of us really can re resonate with because we just don't use that word very much. And so um, I think most of you are familiar with uh, a different understanding of that word, and that is goodness. That a better understanding of that word in scripture that we call glory is actual goodness. And it's pretty interesting how hard it is to overcome goodness. Do you know, like, are there very many things that if goodness were to come in and switch the situation, it would overcome almost anything, right? Hatred, goodness. Evil, goodness. Lies, goodness. Abuse, goodness. It's almost like goodness, which seems like kind of a nothing kind of a thing, is a pretty powerful thing. And so if we're not experiencing goodness, in the midst of our life circumstances, we need to take off the perception that we're wearing and turn it around and take a different look at it. And so that leads us to part two of our series from last week, which was questioning our answers, answering our questions, which is kind of addressing some of the deep, these deep spaces where we're just going, God, I can't see the beautiful pattern in what it is that's happening right here. I can't see the goodness in the midst. So I'd like to take a moment and just hear how any of you processed some of the questions that you shared or maybe didn't share last week. So everybody had, or hopefully everybody had a question or two in their mind of things that they're asking God. And I would love to hear how if anyone had any experience this week hearing anything on that. Go. So I have a calendar that I use as a part of my communication with the Lord. Every month gets a new picture. And it's, um, it's uh, from Rod Miller. So I like buy his calendars. Yeah, it's Rod. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... Um, Rod yeah. Miller, yeah. He, yeah, yeah. So, um, I was having a hard time with the question, where is my husband? And then um, I had a really great conversation with my friend about it yesterday. And I looked at the, the picture for the, the month of November. And at first, it was just really breathtaking and gorgeous. And then I thought, well, that's ugly right afterwards, because it was basically just a whole bunch of ice. Um, and, and then I woke up yesterday morning and I saw it and I realized, oh my gosh, the person who's taking this picture is on a mountain looking down at the ice. 
and I was like, oh God, I, I like my question is basically like me standing in the ice, only seeing death or like frozen, stagnant things that don't move because they're frozen. Um, but he's like, go up on the mountain and see how gorgeous it is, how breathtaking it is. So that's where I've, I've come this week. Mm-hmm. To like actually like, okay, what does that perspective look like? What does it look like to look down and see my life through a different view, to see the beauty, the breathtaking gorgeousness of the situation, mm-hmm. instead of trying to find my way through an ice mm-hmm. maze. So the impossibleness of it and the frustration of it here and get maybe a little bit higher view. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Okay. Cool. Anyone else? So we had, that's okay, totally good. Maybe nobody heard much, or did you do? Okay. I don't have to. (laughs) Um, So a really long time ago, um, Angela kind of in passing said I was a gatherer. And I was like, no, I'm not. (laughs) And- You were wrong, check. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, actually, I was right, <laughs> but um, a few couple weeks ago, um, it came to my mind again, and I double dog dared God to make me a gather, like Aww. do that, like because I'm not, and um, in my business, you kind of need to be, <laughs> otherwise, it doesn't really work. And so um, he has just reminded me several times and shown me several times this week um, that I am, and he is making me a gatherer. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, that was good and, and encouraging and helpful. <laughs> and it, just, it was just really, I think just to encourage other people, like just because you aren't now, doesn't mean you won't be yes. whatever it is you want or feel like someone prophesied over you mm-hmm. later. So that was good. That's so good. That's so, so good. Does that bring up a comment from anyone? So let me run through just a couple of these. It was health. What, what the heck's going on with health? Where is my husband? Love that one from you, Jocelyn. Like, where is he? Um, not even who is he. That was funny. You don't care who. You just let's just find him. Let's find him, and I'll know. Okay, that's hilarious. Where does this rift get reconciled? How? How does this get reconciled? That's super good. Um, what path should I choose professionally? Really, really good. Are you real or am I actually alone? Well, that's a good one. I come back and revisit that one. I haven't revisited that in a really, really long time, but I've had that happen in my life about three different times, and it just about train wrecked me until I realized, like, hey, that's a really good place to be when you hit that place. Um, can some lo- someone love me for who I am? Holy smokes, right? That's super great. Um, can I have a lifetime partner, someone who's really for me and with me? Really, really good. Am I going to die? Like, yeah, that is a good question. I mean, eventually, probably. But the um, question is, you know, like now, am I going to die now in this, yeah, in the hell that I'm in right now, right? Um, am I going to be healed? Or what's that process look like? What is the purpose of this suffering? Yeah, where are you in this? Where is the goodness? Where is the goodness in the challenge that I'm currently in? Um, what do I do with shame? I think Lindsay brought that one up, and that was so powerful. What do I do? What do I do with the conclusions that I've landed in all of my life? And what is God's perspective, you know, in this, which is kind of where we've landed back. So, (sighs) 
I'm going to take a moment and just listen because I'm kind of have a couple different ways I want to go and I just I want to really tune into what God's doing in our lives right here. So I'm just going to take a moment. And if you'll just take a moment with me and just let the Holy Spirit connect with you and the questions of your heart and the questions of your life and say yes to hearing. I'm just going to take a minute. Did anybody experience that they got more questions after these questions that kind of surfaced and bubbled up? Yes? Can you, do you mind sharing just a couple of what those were? Do you remember even? It's okay if you can. Anybody else get more questions? You don't have to share them. Just did it stir more questions. Typically when I start going down a questioning path, it kind of raises up and it starts to go after places where there might be hurt, there might be frustration, there might be a sense of abandonment, where you feel like the Lord hasn't met you or isn't meeting you in that space. That's where the tension and the frustration comes, is that you are learning how to build muscles, essentially. And those muscles that you're learning how to build is in the in-between space, that tension in between the question and the answer. I mean, how many of you remember, like a teacher, you ask them a question, and then they did that thing that annoyed all of you. What was it? Yeah, they asked you another question, or they said, go look it up, right? Didn't that just annoy you to bits? Like, ah, you know, like, isn't that what you're here for, is to help, you know, me out and not make me go look stuff up? Thankfully, we now have Google, and we're not all looking in the ancient Encyclopedia Britannicas that we had, which is where we had to look up our, like, giant wealth of information. Oh, we didn't have that. You didn't have that? I did. No. Okay. So, well, I did. We had a stack of Reader's Digest condensed books. There you go. (laughs) Yeah, right? So, there's that tension. Can we flip this? There's that tension in the space where you're having a conversation with God about something and he hasn't answered it yet. Right? So, that might be um, around house buying. It might be around a spouse. It might be around a business. It might be around something that you're creating. It might be around profession and career. Um, It might be around school life and school situations. It might be around finances and how are my finances going to be resolved. Those are those spaces, right, where you're having a conversation with the Lord and you're like, I'd like to see your goodness. I'd like to see goodness in this situation. Um, But I'm in the tension of the in-between. And so... Coming to the place of the question, if you wouldn't mind putting the question here, like just put the word question. I know I'm trying to like tell you what it is. Yeah. Coming to the place of articulating what your questions are is a part of a partnership with the Holy Spirit that is revelation. Because before that, what you have is a nebulous unrest. You have a nebulous inability to articulate what it is that you're unhappy about. How many of you have, occasionally throughout your day, nebulous unrest? Right? If you can't really describe why, you don't really know what it's about, it's not just that somebody cut you off on the road, you just have this nebulous, I can't really articulate or describe it, unrest. So, in that space is typically the questions that are waiting to be asked. In that space are the things that you haven't yet come to realize you're unhappy about, that you don't like the way your reality is. That's nebulous unrest. That's unsettledness. It can also come out as anger. 
because in the places where things are unresolved, we often become fearful because we feel powerless. Right? And so because we become fearful, because we feel powerless, we can find ourselves snapping at people we love. We can find ourselves angry at a store clerk who means nothing to us because they were slightly rude. As if we're like five years old and need the affirmation of a store clerk. Do you know what I mean? Like, really? Really? I need the affirmation of a random stranger? But in that moment, we do. Because why? We have unrest. We have the fear and we have the unspoken question. So getting to the place where you actually have articulated a question is a part of the Holy Spirit getting you in touch with what matters to you. So congratulations, you're partway there. But we tend to think is, I've had these questions forever, or I have these questions, you know, and we don't realize what a victory there is in getting to the question. And getting to the quality of question that God wants to start having the conversation with us about. Right? So that alone is a partnership with the Holy Spirit. So yay! So just congratulate yourself that you've got a whole pile of questions that you're starting to explore and going, I want to see your goodness in this situation. And then there's the tension. So I'm going to have you put just like kind of a, like a little slide. There's a tension in this space between where you're starting to have the conversation, you just put the little arrow, of where you're moving from questions into and I'm going to put conversations. Every once in a while, God just drops a nugget on me, or I as a part of humanity have some sort of thing just drop on me, and I get answers. Do you guys get those right? Every once in a while, that just happens. Just boom, here's the answer. But a lot of times, what I get is a conversation with God, which, by the way, sometimes really ticks me off. <laughs> because sometimes I just want the answer. But what he's wanting to do is continually develop relationship with me. And it's hard to experience his goodness without the relationship. So what he's doing is he's inviting me into the conversation. Because answers tend to, and I'm just going to, this is how I perceive God. Say, okay, so I'm just going to like, this is what I feel like Proverbs tries to describe and explain the way of wisdom the way of the Holy Spirit, which is this thing where answers are dominating. If we just got answers, they'll dominate us. Should I do this? Should I not do this? Yes, no. If we got that answer, then the entire question becomes about obedience. Right? If we got just an answer, boom, it becomes about obedience. But if it starts to become a conversation, it's an invitation to relationship and it's an invitation to become mature in your own decision making. So oftentimes we hear God a lot and then we don't hear him and we wonder like, why is it that I don't hear him so much right now? And typically it's because he's inviting us into a level of conversation with him that is inviting us into a level of maturity that we haven't had before. So we don't recognize it for what it is. We don't recognize it as a come to the table, sit down and have a conversation with me about this subject that's frustrating you, stressing you, aggravating you. Because this isn't a yes or no, I'm going to solve it for you. This is a you get to have a say in how this turns out. You get to have a say in your career. You get to have a say in your house. You get to have a say. You get to have a say in finances. You get to have a say in how this whole dynamic, how this relationship gets healed. You get to have a say. And so it's about a conversation. And it's about a place of connection and relationship. How do we get to that? How can we speed the process along? Because we're like, come on God, I've been having this com you know, question for a long time. Can we please get this show? Does anybody feel that way? Get this show on the road. Okay. So one of the ways that we can speed this process is letting go of the conclusions that we already have. So if you would put that over here, if you didn't mind, conclusions. Because we don't realize that we've concluded all of these things. But you know, our brain is filled with a myriad of conclusions, right? We all walk because we take gravity for granted. We wear clothing because we expect it to stay on our bodies and not lift off. You know, right? We drink water out of a cup because we expect it to stay in there. We're, we take all of these things for granted that our brain has calculated before the age of reason. We've talked about that. And so there is this myriad of conclusions that we have already made 
about our questions that we don't even realize we've made. And it's part of the sweater being done. I love that somebody saw the inside of the sweater and went, that's how that goes. <laughs> it's so pretty. I love it. And they and convinced an entire factory to finish it wrong, <laughs> right? I mean, like, there was more than one person who made that decision. More than one person participated in how that sweater turned out. I love that. I love that somehow that happened and a whole bunch of people just did it. <laughs> but those are conclusions, you know? And we often don't question the conclusions that we've already made. And so if you want to speed the conversation that you're having with God about something that's irritating you or frustrating you, the thing is then to take all of your conclusions and put them on the table and you go, well, I don't even know what they are. And that is where we hit pater, which is where we go, Holy Spirit, dig up the conclusions that I don't know that are standing in my way. Dig up those conclusions. Dig up all the perceptions that I don't even know that I have and allow me to just lay them before you so that you can weave another pattern. You can create new possibilities. You can make this sweater look different. You can talk into this situation in my life differently. Because when we're feeling abandoned by God, those are, those are conclusions that are getting hit up against. Because every single difficult circumstance in our life is designed to bring us into goodness. So every current difficult circumstance is meant to bring you into a better understanding and experience of God's goodness. And if, that's, if we're trying to escape the experience rather than pursue the goodness, we are spending a lot of our energy moving in the wrong direction. If we keep trying to solve the problem rather than pursue the goodness, we've missed the opportunity. And I've spent most of my life doing that, by the way. I've spent most of my life trying to solve problems rather than pursuing goodness and missing the opportunity for God to unearth the conclusions that are causing me the pain that I'm experiencing in this situation in the first place. So, thoughts or comments? Or questions? Yeah. Earlier, one of the questions was, what is um, the purpose in this pain? And you said, what is the goodness? Uh -huh. And I just really liked that because we so always want to find out what the purpose, like what's God's purpose in this? He doesn't have a purpose. He did not do this to you. He did not want this to happen to you. But in everything he has goodness in it, there's goodness in it if we choose to, to see it. And so I just, it was just like a little light, light, bulb, a light bulb way of, of just saying that. Like where's the goodness in this instead of where's the purpose? Mm -hmm. So I liked it. Yay, I like it too. That's super good. Anybody else? We're a quiet group today. It's totally cool. Okay, well then I'm going to wrap up with my last story and then we'll do practice. So, um, some of you know, I, um, Nikki had a Facebook post on her Facebook page of a gentleman who was sharing his perspective on how he feels about women preachers. And um, it was aggressive in the way that it was articulated that women should not be preaching um, end of story, end of sentence, end of paragraph, the end. And that um, a specific woman in particular should just go home. And um, I saw, I clicked on her link and saw this um, shared and it woke me up to the fact that I have kind of become insulated in realizing that this perspective still exists. <laughs> You know, I forget that this perspective is so alive and well on the earth, you know, especially here in America, women are, you know, given so much 
um, equality, that I forget that the world does not treat women the same way. Um, but in watching this message, um, I had like a physical reaction to it. Um, it was almost like a, like a little like a convulsion kind of a thing that happened. But it was so interesting because I wasn't angry. Um, I wasn't horrified. I wasn't, I was actually, um, I don't know if this sounds weird, but I was, I was feeling um, relief. I was feeling this tremendous relief as I was hearing articulated this aggressive um, violence against humanity.